If you hadn't seen the title of this video, I would bet most of you wouldn't have guessed right away that this is a clock. Although some of you know me well enough that you could probably just assume that at this point. In any case, this is a single digit LED clock from the late 1970s. I unfortunately don't know all that much about this one, as it arrived to me as a non-functional circuit board with no documentation and no case. I was able to repair it and I installed it in this modern shadow box picture frame, which I think makes it look pretty nice. The glass cover of the case is very reflective, so I'm going to take it out of the case. Thankfully that's pretty easy to do, as it has these latches on all four sides. There's three controls, fast, slow, and hold. And I'm running it off of 9 volts AC at 500 milliamps. I don't know exactly what adapter would have come with this originally, but I'm using the same sort of adapter on this that I've used on other clocks that use the same main IC, or ones in the same family, I should say. Here's the circuit board without that reflective case in the way. This is the main IC here. It's an MM5318N. It's not a chip you see very often. The MM5314 is much more common in digital clock projects. And then you've got a couple CMOS ICs around it. A CD4051BF, a CD4060BE, an MM14082B, and the classic 555 timer right here. And this is technically an IC as well. That's the 7812C 12 volt regulator. I don't have a schematic for this clock. One could surely be developed. I don't plan on doing that to be honest. That chip is rare enough that you'd have a hard time getting a hold of one to produce these boards in any quantity, so I don't really see all that much purpose in doing so. Alright, let's fire this thing up so you can see how it works. I just plugged in the old Condor 9 volt AC adapter that I've got on hand. And you can see it's running right away, although not really displaying a valid time, it's just flashing 1-3. I'm going to hold down the fast set button for a little bit. That'll initialize all the internal counters in the chip. That's probably good. So, one, two, five, four. So, 12.54. Actually happened to land on a nice time that shows all the digits. Seems like there's a slightly longer pause between the last digit of the hours and the first digit of the minutes and there is between the digits of the hours and minutes and then there's an even longer pause before it starts showing the time again. It takes a little getting used to reading this clock and setting this clock is definitely a bit of a pain but once you get the hang of it it's actually usable as a timepiece even though it is more of an art piece, to be honest. To set it, you basically just have to advance the time a bit and then check it again. If you know you're off by hours, then you just have to hold down the fast set button for a while. So now we've got, let's see, 3.55. And then you could press the slow set button, which like other uh, ICs in this family, We'll just rapidly advance the seconds, which aren't shown. So now we've got 4.03. You can just tap it a little bit more if you want to go ahead about one minute. It definitely takes some practice, like I said. There is a hold switch, and you can actually stop display of the time as well with that. It doesn't just hold the time. It's tricky to catch it while a digit is lit up, but it is doable. You have to like anticipate when it's gonna light up. 
Ah, okay, I got it. The clock draws quite a bit more current when the LEDs are on, obviously. Although it averages out to fairly low power consumption under normal operation since the LEDs are off most of the time and there's only one digit. You can see it has a resistor for every single LED. Kind of an odd choice considering that the clock is running off of this 12 volt regulator here and with five LEDs per segment they could have just put all of them in series those red LEDs only drop about 1.5 volts each so you could put all of them in series and that would be 7.5 volts so they could have uh, had one-fifth the number of resistors here ah well if someone remakes this thing they could uh, make that change I did make some minor modifications to the circuit I added uh, two little ceramic capacitors in there one was to slow down the rate at which the you know digits are displayed by a little bit and the second capacitor was to try and stabilize the output of this guy a little bit they had no filter capacitor on that at all so I added a little ceramic cap on the output as I mentioned earlier this clock wasn't working when I received it the seller had used it for quite a while and initially he said it wasn't able to be set and then it just stopped working entirely didn't take me all that long to find the problem one of the ICs had a uh, ground connection that wasn't soldered properly and once I fixed that issue the clock worked just fine when it comes to clocks like this where I don't have a schematic or any other information, it's nice when the repair ends up not being uh, that troublesome. I also, of course, replaced the original filter capacitor while I was at it. Now, I believe this clock is from 1979, as the few ICs that have a date code I can interpret are dated 1979. Like this one says 935, 35th week of 1979. This one is labeled 7646, so 46th week of 79. And then this one's 918, following the same formula. And this one's 927. The other ones I'm not so sure about. Maybe one of them was a replacement. That one says 9636. This one definitely looks older and says 631, so probably 76, 31st week. I'm, I'm guessing this was a replacement though. It looks too new. Well, thanks for watching, and if anyone of you knows more about this clock, please let me know. I'm curious who sold this kit originally. And it would be nice to have the schematic as well if it's still out there.